Hey, what's up guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and probably you have recognized that Maxon just lately released its update for Redshift and of course for Cinema 4D. And yeah, let's be honest, I was hoping for proper particle to particle collisions or maybe already a liquid simulation tool that we can already use. I mean, at least it got announced for the near future. So my hope is high that this tool, these simulation tools for fluids Will be powerful but yeah as i guess most of you i'm using also a little bit of houdini or x particles or liquid gen for that kind of stuff but of course i want to have these tools natively in cinema 4d and it is about time right and just to get this one behind us just let me quickly mention that this one is my patreon 3d bonfire and you can see that quite a lot of people already trust me there and definitely it's also not lacking on content okay so if you want to learn more about cinema 4d and also lately about liquid Gen or even Houdini, then this will be the right address for you. And in case you want to be up to date with my latest artworks and tutorial ideas, then this will be the way to connect with me on Instagram. It's Marcus Gonza 3D. And before we dive back into the tutorial, let me just mention that I'm really curious about your current feelings about Maxon and Cinema 4D. So please feel free to write a comment and I'm always happy to read them and reply back and maybe also subscribe to my YouTube channel. But now let's continue with the training. So yeah, even though that the spring release is not that exciting. I just want to do something cool with you anyway. So at least we got a powerful cloth engine module in Cinema 4D. And I think that this one also got some minor updates, maybe in the stability or the speed. I'm not sure exactly about it. Maybe I'm telling you something wrong. But the main thing is you can use the cloth engine for really cool stuff. If you inflate your objects, you can see you can create really powerful compositions like this one. And here are some software preview shots where you also can see some beautiful stretching and bending and all of this one is stable. And I would say like I was using the cloth engine now in several client projects already and I made good experiences with it in terms of speed and reliability. Of course, I'm lacking experience in other tools like Houdini. So of course you could do the same thing with Valium. But I just have the feeling that these tools in Cinema 4D are really easy to set up and I just made good experiences with it. And I mean, you can see here, you can easily create something that is looking really complex with these tools if you do it right and you know about the limitations because of course, sometimes you run into limitations. This is always the case when you work with simulation tools. So yeah, I would say let's just jump over into Cinema 4D. Maybe one last thing, if you want to learn more about that stuff, I I just made a longer lesson for this one on my Patreon. So you could also check that out if you just want to dive deeper in those topics. But you can see here is uh, already cached simulation. And I will be honest with you, this one is not just everything simulated, but you also have to sometimes work with clever instancing or clones. So for example, yeah, you can see that some of these elements, especially in the background, you can see those ones, they are just instances of already simulated objects. So for example, you can see that this hierarchy here in the front, let me just make this one invisible. This piece here, this one is simulated. You can see the several objects here in this null hierarchy and those ones, they will have the cloth tag on it. But then as I said, just to fill up the background, you can definitely, when your simulation is cached, just duplicate this one as instances and just fill up your screen. All right. So you can see that this one is actually heavily relying on instancing in the background. But I also simulated like 50 or 60 or 70 70 objects over there. So this one should already give you like a pretty useful little uh, disclaimer for how to work with clones on how to achieve complexity. But of course you should at least maybe simulate, I would say like 60 or 50, like those ones that you can see over here. And then you just, if you use single objects, like I'm doing it, let's just jump over to frame zero. You can actually see, you can see that this one is my object setup, which then will get inflated and then I'm just using my forces to put them into interesting shapes and compositions and I'm also giving them a lot of stretch and bendiness to yeah just let them get into interesting long shapes 
you can see it over there. And when you give your objects in addition some inflation, then you give them some pressure and you just get all kinds of beautiful shapes. Of course, you could put these objects then into, for example, a ficken to just let them grow a little bit, but then in addition, put them into a subdivision surface to just make these wrinkles high resolution details. And then, I mean, you could just go around your object and you will find beautiful angles all along the way, put some light into it, put some beautiful shaders into the mix. For example, something with some subsurface scattering or with transmission or with metallicness or with sheen. And if you do it right, then you can easily create very aesthetically pleasing compositions with ease and with just little amount of time. And I would say, of course, you can do the same thing with Wellum in Houdini, for example, but maybe, I mean, I will say just like that, just maybe you will be faster with this in Cinema 4D because these tools are just so simple to use. And maybe just to prove my point, how simple this one is to set up, let's just make a very fast simulation here. So I will press NB to see the lines and I will also get rid of the work play and the world axis. And let's just search for an interesting shape here, maybe something like this. I want to give this one some fillet. I will increase the radius, maybe even to the maximum to something like this one. I will give it some subdivisions like that. This is looking good. I think I could even increase this one to 10 and let's also boost these ones up a little bit. And then just to get better geometry for the uh, simulation, I will just put this one into a remesh. This one is looking way better. That's beautiful. Let's duplicate this object and I will move this one over here. Maybe I will stretch this one out a little bit. I want to give this one just a little bit more resolution. So I will just jump over here, put this one to 150. This is looking better, but I think I could go even to 200 to just match the overall resolution of the other object. This is looking good. And maybe let's create one more of these objects and I'll move this one over there. I want to stretch this one out a bit, put it up like this. Okay, this is looking interesting. And maybe just one last object. Let's move one over here. And for this one, I think I just want to stretch this one down a little bit, something like that. Now I feel like the resolution for this one is a bit too dense. This is why I'm jumping into this and put this one to 120, for example. That is looking good. I will select all of these objects, go to simulation and put a balloon tag onto it. Then I will press Control D to go into the scene settings. I will jump to simulation. Let's check the scene. I want to get rid of the gravity. Let me see the simulation settings here. Maybe I would just put a little bit more damping into the scene to make it a bit more graceful. And I mean, this workflow that I'm showing you here is nothing new. I went through similar techniques already in several tutorials previously, but I just wanted to dive back into these tools because it is just so much fun to work with them. Set this one to 100 and this one maybe to 60. We could also put a rotation into the scene. This one will rotate around the Z Z axis. So this is looking good. Let's put this one to 100. I think I want to restrict the rotation maybe with a spherical field. Okay. I will just make this one bigger to something like this one. And then in addition, I could put a vibrate tag onto the rotation. Let it move a little bit in the axis. This is fine. I will put this one to 0.2. For example, the rotation, let's put this one to higher values and this one maybe to a lower frequency so that this one is just wiggling around a little bit and will change its rotation axis. And I would say let's just fire up and see what is happening in the simulation. You can definitely see the influence from the turbulence. It seems like the rotation is not doing so much. So let me deactivate the turbulence and let's just see if this one has a strong impact. No, the impact is quite minor. And I think also the rotation axis is shifting too fast. So I would just put this one and this one to 0 0.05 and go into the value. Okay, let's put this one maybe to 600. Let's Let's see this one more time. All right, now you can see this one is moving definitely stronger with your rotation. It's kind of interesting. So now maybe we want to combine this one with the turbulence and let's just see what will happen in the scene. All right, so this is kind of interesting. It's looking cool. You can see some ugly edges here and there, but this is just due to some funk shading error and also to the resolution. So you could put all of this one into a null and then maybe hold down all, put this one into a subdivision surface to make this one nice 
nice and smooth and there you go you already got a beautiful glove simulation here of course the simulation will change completely depending on your setups there especially also onto the overpressure settings but honestly what i was showing you just right now in five minutes is the same thing that i'm doing here with these more complex simulations that you can see here and also one of the magic tricks is to maybe also work with an attraction force to keep these soft bodies close together let them come close and melt into these interesting cloth sculptures that you can see here so it's always getting interesting when these single soft bodies will get close together and they will react depending on their pressure and you get beautiful wrinkles and you will just get really really beautiful shots from all kind of different angles so i would suggest you to just move around with your camera when you have a simulation and i mean you can see it here from all kinds of angles you will get then very interesting shots and this is so easily done with cinema 4d so yeah even though <laughs> let's repeat it one more time the spring release of cinema 4d and redshift is not very interesting you still can rely on the cloth engine and the balloon inflation to just have a good time in cinema 4d okay so i would say thank you so much for your time here just remember that a lot of training you will find exclusively on my patreon 3d bonfire so it would be amazing if you support me there but other than that thank you so much for your time have an amazing day bye everyone